Hey there, how are you today? I'd like to talk to you about backlash. So I have a telescope mount and it's suffering from a little backlash right now. And I'm also struggling to take long exposure photographs with nice clean round stars. And I think the backlash has a lot to do with it. So I want to take it apart and see what I can do to fix the problem. And I have to confess that I already did start. I've already got the declination axis apart. But then I realized that other people might want to see how this all goes together and comes apart and goes back together and all of that. So I've decided to bring you along for the rest of this. So today we're going to take apart the right ascension axis, check some things out, regrease everything, hopefully get it all back together so that it works. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay, let's get started. All right, so here's our declination axis it's already taken apart i'm going to zoom in on that a little bit for you so you can see better so there you go here we have our ring gear uh on this plate mounts the worm gear over here goes the stepper motor that runs the whole thing and then you know we've got some wiring that i've took it, taken off to um to make it easier to get in here but anyway you can see this thing spins and I've already checked it to make sure that it's you know true and it is so we need now to move on to the right ascension axis all right I've turned the scope around and we're looking at the right ascension side now but all these covers are on so we need to get those out of here so here we go ready that's better okay so now we have the covers off and so we can see some of the insides of this now. We have the ring gear here. Here's the worm. There's an encoder on the worm for mine. Uh, here's a pulling in a belt going to the stepper motor that drives this axis. So all these things need to get out of the way so we can check uh, whether this guy is running true or not. So that'll be the next thing. So our first task here is to get the the stepper motor out of here. So I'm going to do that. This is a three millimeter Allen key. All right, so the screws are out. So now all we got to do is just we can push this a little, little bit here and get the belt off and just pop that right out of there. So you can see this nice spot of oil here that's not so great that is from my separated white lithium grease so don't use white lithium grease okay now that the stepper motor is out of the way our next step is to take the worm gear block right here off and then we'll have complete access to the to the right ascension ring gear I know that this guy is still a three and a half, three millimeter. Okay, so once you get these four out, um, this is the main one that holds it in. Um, so let's get that out of there. So that screw on top is the main adjustment screw for this guy. And when I get this off of here, you'll see underneath here, let's see, focus. Yeah, so underneath here, you can see we got a couple of uh, set screws. Um, so when this is sitting on there like that, um, you can change the height of the set screws there. And that will uh, change the engagement of the worm which is here. The next step is to get this here dial indicator attached to that there mount so that we can check to make sure that this here ring is actually spinning true. So let me get that mounted up. All right, so uh, bad news for the right ascension axis. It looks like we are not running true. If we watch this indicator, it's all over the place. So, I don't know what to do about that. 
Uh, I don't know how the bearings work inside of here, you know, inside this area here. So I'm going to have to look into that some. So I'm going to look into that a little bit, and I will be right back. See you then. It's not as bad as I thought. So we we're at, on this side it's at zero, and then if I spin it around on the other side, it's off by a thousandth. So that's pretty close, I don't think I can get that any better, and I don't know how this all comes apart anyway, so we're going to stick with it off by a thousandth. I don't know why that this other ring inside here is off by so much, but what's important is inside the the teeth and so it's only off by a thousandth so now what we want to do is just get everything out of these teeth as much as possible here which you, know, you can call it's a combination of wiping it with some like these cotton things or paper towels or whatever you got around and then working at these teeth some more and then that'll smear it all over the place and then you can wipe it some more and just keep going back and forth like that until it's all cleaned out all right here we are my ring is all nice and clean I've taken the clutches off so I could clean it easier one thing I will tell you right now is to avoid these cotton things here um, they just leave a lot of a lot of stuff behind and I had to blow it off and it's just not worth it. It leaves too much residue behind. Try to get something more lint free. I ended up with uh, just regular old bounties. Um, it's pretty good. I'm not sure. There's got to be something better but I'm not really sure what it would be. Anyway, the proper grease now you want is this stuff here. Super Lube Multipurpose Synthetic Grease. Um, and so this stuff won't separate, it's got the uh, proper temperature ranges and stuff for telescopes, it can go down to minus 45 degrees or some stupid thing like that, which is, you won't catch me out trying to use a telescope in those kind of temperatures, so it is, its range exceeds mine, let's put it that way. So the clutches you want to put back on as well. So these go this way, uh, let's see, so this is the first piece, and then this one here, there's like an indent on this part here, okay, there's like an indent on this side of it, and on this side it's convex, so, um, this concave side here, is what goes towards so you're gonna have one ring and then that concave side goes on there and then your last ring goes on at the end but we gotta get these gotta get some grease on these first so I'm just gonna put a little grease on here not don't need a lot I'm just gonna spread this around coat both sides get this thing totally covered in grease the thin coating don't need a lot and let's see this is the side that has the marks in it from the bearings so put that one on first next up is this one and same thing, just gonna squirt a little grease in there. This one will take a little more because you gotta work it in inside all these little bearings here. And this axis on my telescope for some reason is very tight. Like I can't spin that ring gear very easily. So you just want to work this stuff around as best as you possibly can. Try to cover everything in a little thin coating as much as you possibly can. 
Okay, now this is the, here's our concave side, so that's going to go in. And last but not least is our little, last little ring here. So, last one, cover this guy up with grease. Same thing. And he goes on there last, just like that. And now, you got this little screw that goes right in here. Okay. Alright, next part is pull grease right here, right on the right on here and I'm gonna work my way around I'm gonna try to spread this out as much as I possibly can so you can see this is now lubed up it's hard to tell on the movie but anyway it's I've worked it in all the way into the bottom of all of the teeth as much as possible I don't have too much on there I just just enough to fill the get it inside the teeth the worm will push away anything extra so clutches are back on everything's all greased up and ready to go so our next step is take our worm here and you gotta clean out his teeth too so that's the next step all right I just noticed another problem when I spin this right here you can't see it but I can feel it it's not smooth as it turns through there there's something it's something catching in there and I'm sure that's not helping my performance on tracking either so I'm actually gonna swap this guy for the declination one which means I have to take all this stuff off and switch it as well okay you can see that's all cleaned up now moved over all this stuff and we got a smoother running worm so hopefully that'll fix the right ascension axis some so next step is to start putting this thing back on Okay, try to do the same thing here as with the other one and just fill up the threads as much as, or fill up the, sorry, gear, fill up the teeth as much as possible with um, grease but not over, you know, not have it everywhere and uh, it's probably still too much grease but I'd rather have too much than too little I think. So that's what I'm going with. Now we can put this on to here and it just sits on top of there and this allen screw drops right in there so now comes all the adjustment part and I'm not sure how I can show that on here very well but essentially you're trying to get the the best engagement between the worm here and the ring down there and have this thing be as flat as possible and the, the most engagement and closest together and you want it to still you know this should spin very very freely with almost no resistance whatsoever um, so when you have it too close meshed it won't turn really at all or it'll be very like tough to move and, and you'll know it's wrong because you'll feel that it's like wearing on things it's not right um, so yeah you're trying to but then if you can make it real nice and loose and easy to move but then things move around on their own because as you can see this is gonna push things around if I try to move this and of course once that's screwed down I wouldn't be doing that but if it's not meshed properly then it will move a little and that's what I'm trying to get rid of here Okay, I wanted to give you a close-in view of this 
um, worm block here, the way that it works. So this is our main tightening screw here. That That's going to set your final position. Uh, what you've got on either side of that, you've got a little set screw here and another one here. And you can use those be between this one and these two. You can adjust that up and down until it's the mesh is perfect. Meanwhile, on the back here, you've got these four screws, which I've got one out so you can see the hole where it would go uh, right here. And the other three are here. So you want those to be snug, but this should still kind of move. But what you don't want is for it to be moving this way at all. Um, so you want it, you basically want to snug these up. So you can, this just slides is all you want. And then once that's the truth, then you know you just use these to, to set it the right height. And you keep working that until you get the, the best possible mesh. And this screw here, is just to set the position of the stepper motor and it doesn't tighten or anything it just sits there and it's not even really that necessary you can tension the belt yourself and just tighten the thing down where you think it belongs it's not that big of a deal but they do have that just to keep it from sliding around i guess all right this is handheld so it's not a great shot but you can see the worm in there and so you're just going to keep working that until you have the proper engagement Okay, so once you feel like you have the mesh the way you want it, now you're just going to go ahead and run this by hand. And you can watch these screws here. And you want to go all the way around full 360 degrees. Make sure that it doesn't catch anywhere along the entirety of the, the whole circle of it. And once that's true, and if you've got like, you know, you don't have much backlash, um, which means I shouldn't be able to turn this, and I can't, and this is pretty loose, um, so I think that's as good as it's going to get. I'm, I'm going to continue buttoning this up. Uh, i got to put the motor and everything back on, but yeah, if you took yours apart, you know how to put all that back together. I'm not going to bore you with that. Okay, a couple more things on this housing right here. You're going to want to check on the inside of mine. There was a bunch of grease. So I cleaned that out. And the other thing is on this wheel here. Um, so this is what's going to screw in here. And this is for the clutch. This edge here needs oil on it. And this is the oil you want. The Super Lube Multipurpose Synthetic. According to everyone on Cloudy Nights. So yeah, just put a little uh, bead of oil on there like that, and uh, screw it back in. There we go. Nice smooth clutch action. Doesn't get better than that. So we're back, and it's all back together. And it's moving, and it works the way it's supposed to, which is great, because um, it would be really depressing if it didn't. Anyway, uh, a couple more tips that I didn't really share during the video, because I'm new to doing these, and I don't think of everything along the way. Um, I used acetone on those gears and all the other parts, the, the clutches and everything else, to clean off the old grease, and that worked out really well. Uh, and a toothbrush, you saw that in the video, but you know if you dip the toothbrush in the acetone, it, it really gets stuff out of those grooves pretty quick, uh, which is nice, and it'll dry and not leave any residue, which is also good. So if you try this, good luck. Um, hope this helped. If uh, you're running into backlash issues on your own mount, uh, hopefully this gave you some idea how things go together and maybe now you're on your way to making your mount better too. So I won't know how great this is until I get it out there and see how it actually tracks, but it's a lot tighter than it was. So with that, I'll leave you. Have a good one, and I'll see you in another video sometime soon. Thanks. Bye.